Thank you, Mr. Haywood. Uh, my name is Eric Kashida. I'm here from Denny Hex campaign. He's the Democrat running in the new 10th congressional district, the, uh, the district that you know, this high school and, and I'm, um, is in. Um, he wasn't able to be here today in person, so he gave me a letter that he wanted me to read to you, and I'll do that now. Dear Black Hills High School, thank you for allowing my representative to read this letter today. I apologize that I'm unable to attend your mock election. I grew up in a working class family. Mom was a telephone operator and dad was a truck driver. They taught me, through their words and their actions, that in America, if you work hard and play by the rules, you can get ahead. That's the America I believe in for my sons, Bob and Trey. The America I want waiting for you when you graduate from Black Hills. The America I'll fight for every day in Congress. What made that America possible, and what keeps our country strong today, is a strong middle class. I'm running for Congress because the other Washington isn't doing enough to help grow and strengthen the middle class, and those working to get into the middle class. We need representatives in Congress who will make job creation their top priority. I spent the last decade in the private sector helping to grow small businesses, creating hundreds of family wage jobs in Washington State. One company that I start, helped start right here in Thurston County has grown from two employees to over 300. In addition to my private sector experience, I was also elected to five terms in the State House of Representatives and served as Chief of Staff to Governor Ruth Gardner during his second term. This blend of experience means that I know when government it can do to help create jobs and when it should get out of the way. We have to rebuild our nation's infrastructure and revitalize manufacturing so that we make things in America again. There was a time when American manufacturing was the best in the world, and there is no reason why that can't be the case again if we invest in innovation and growing sectors of our economy like clean energy. It's estimated that more than half of the jobs that will be created in the next decades will be in STEM, that's science, technology, engineering, and math fields. And we need to have a workforce that's ready to step into those jobs. That's why I believe that it's so important that all of you have the chance to get a great education. We need to ensure full federal funding for K-12 education, support our community colleges, increase spending on programs that make college affordable, like Pell Grants, and keep the interest on federal or Stafford loans stable. The next Congress must be willing to make the tough decisions needed to balance our budget, invest in your future, and put Americans back to work. And I would be honored to have your vote in today's election and on November 6th. Sincerely, Denny Hatt. But the president's work has been complicated by a do-nothing Congress the last two years. He needs serious people like Denny Hack. He uh, supports the class, federal reclassification of medical marijuana so that it can be safely prescribed by doctors and used by patients without fear of federal prosecution. Um, we, we also have a ballot initiative um, here in the state. You know, Denny thinks that it's a good issue to be decided by the people in the state. Nice to go first. Um, <laughs> So in Denny's letter, you mentioned infrastructure spending, um, and, and, and obviously, you know, creating jobs is, is, is a broad process, but I think that infrastructure is one of the things that the federal government can do right now, that Congress can do, can help a lot, you know, in the short term to help get the economy moving again. Um, to, to give an example, State Route 167, you know, hasn't been completed into the Port of Tacoma. The Port of Tacoma estimates that if we were to finish that, that would be 80,000 long-term jobs in our region. Uh, in the short term also, when you're, when you're building these projects, uh, you, you, know, you, you provide employment for lots of construction workers, highly skilled workers you know, who, who need uh, jobs you know, in, in a decline in the construction economy or in the, in the construction industry thanks to the economic downturn. So, so I think that you know, federal funding for infrastructure is something that the federal government can do um, more or less right away to help get Americans back to work. And then also if we can invest uh, and, and have a tax code that supports innovation in sectors like you know, clean energy, where the, where the jobs of the future are going to be, then we can make sure that those jobs are, you know, come, come here to the 10th district, come here and stay here in America. You know, if, if we have the workforce and the infrastructure to support the new jobs, then they'll, they'll be in place um, for the future. I think your desire for more specifics about what candidates would do to improve jobs in the economy is certainly a, a really good question. And I think it's worth asking or looking, see what's happened when, we, when you know, President Obama especially you know, has been specific about you know, introducing the American Jobs Act, about 
if you remember the debt ceiling um, battle last July, you know, he, he was willing to be very specific about how do we you know, match an increase in the debt ceiling with, with a very, very comprehensive deal that would balance our budget and cut the deficit. And what's always happened, or, you know, a lot of times what you see is a Congress that is unwilling to work with him. You know, that, 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 will, that is not willing to compromise in the slightest on their ideas. They want to get everything that they want at the cost of what's good for the country. Uh, and so to, to, to return to, to infrastructure projects, because, because I think that, you know, Former Representative Williams made an excellent point that, you know, yes, you know, we can't just spend our way out of the economic situation that we're in, but, you, you know, businesses need highways and well-educated workers and all these other things to grow and to, and, you know, to grow their businesses. Uh, there's a proposal in Congress that was proposed a couple years ago for an infrastructure bank that would fund projects like, you know, a like um, reforming I-5, or re refurbishing I-5, excuse me, so that it can accommodate all the traffic that's coming in with people moving into JBLM. Does anybody here think that that would be a bad idea? No, I don't think so. And so, and so that's been on the table. It's supported by the AFL-CIO, the largest labor group in the country, the Chamber of Commerce, a large, very conservative business organization that almost never agrees with the AFL-CIO. And so there's agreement in the country that we should fund these kinds of infrastructure projects. There's not agreement in the Congress, and that's because Congress is too partisan. Denny Heck, is a candidate with a proven record as a legislator, and also he founded TVW by working with you know, the Republican leader or in the state legislature because they, they could find agreement on civics education and, and, an, informant, and, and an open government. If he has a proven track record of being able to work with other people, and that's exactly, I mean, it's not just the president you know, who will determine whether or not the country can move forward. We also need a Congress that will move forward because there are specific common sense ideas that just aren't getting acted on right now. 